Well, this, it's day four. Word of the day was wind on the first day. Oh, oh what about gosh. all the rain this morning, Liz? You know, I think every group except for this A pool and AM1 had to deal with almost a torrential downpour almost at every course. Rochester got pounded today with rain. Well, we'll see what it does to the scorecards. The A pool, the men's advance, who we're here to show you this afternoon at Palmer Park, they haven't had to deal with the rain. It's a little humid, it's cloudy, it's a beautiful afternoon for golf. Yeah, now it is. Well, we're looking at the lead card. Dan Hastings now on top, followed by Kenny Glassman, Pete Ulibarri, and then Dylan Horst. That's your lead card for this afternoon at Palmer Park for the live action. Before though, let's go over to a course look, one of the 2011 AM World Championship courses. Here's Basil Morella. All right, we just got off the highway and we're, we have arrived at Basil A. Morella Park. It looks pretty dense in there. I don't know, there should be some tight lines. Let's go check it out. One at Basil A. Morella Park in Rochester, New York is about 229 feet. There's no shortage of trees and technicality on this hole. You're going to face a struggle all the way down with trees that are from four to about eight inches wide. The green itself is very guarded with 12 to 15 trees within 15 feet of the basket. Hole three at Basil Park, beautiful hole. Once you make the turn from left to right off the tee pad, you're gonna be forced to shoot at an elevated basket. Best shots here are gonna to come to rest in this nice open landing area. However, if you don't hold your turn all the way through the apex, you may land in the OB pit. Right, hole six is a challenging 360 feet. If you take the right line, you're gonna flirt with many trees. A lot of players will call this a jail. What you wanna do here is throw a nice safe shot about three quarters up the way of the fairway to a nice big open landing zone and take an easy approach shot for your three. Hole number nine, only 218 feet. This shot is a sharp hyzer. Most players will consider this an easy birdie opportunity. However, don't get caught up early. You want to hold tight to the right hand side and fall in through the trees that are guarding the front of the basket. Hole number 11, it's a very technical hole here at Basil Park. This is a par four, and what players want to do here is throw themselves about halfway to three quarters of the way down the fairway, give themselves a nice easy chance for an easy approach. Okay, here we're standing at the landing zone on hole number 11. From here, you have to go over a small ravine and the basket is perched on the other side. Again, here, it's technical. You want to avoid the trees, stay in the middle, and get yourself onto the green. Okay, hole 13, it's 243 feet. It moves left to right. The green is highly guarded, and there's also a tricky elevation change that players will have to be aware of. Off the back side of the right of the tee, be very aware, there's a platform, but over that platform is a cliff down to a stream. Number 16 is a tricky shot. It's 255 feet. After you make it through a line of trees, you have to be very wary of the river running behind the basket. It's perched on the front of the peninsula. You have plenty of room behind it. However, room to the right and left is scarce. Well, holding true to form for the finishing hole at Basil, this hole offers no shortness and technicality. This is a long sweeping hyzer. There's a couple different lanes that you can choose. However, you're gonna have to get lucky if you wanna make it all the way down to the guarded green. Okay, so we've just had a look at Basil A. Morella Park. 
It's a very tight course. I think a lot of players are going to find a lot of trouble. They'll find a lot of trees. The lines are extremely difficult, but they are also gettable. So get out here, practice it if you can, because there are birdies. However, play safe, stay in the fairway, because the rough is rough. Well, what a beautiful track Basil Morella is. That is a tight place, Billy. There's trees everywhere. The players have to really satisfy a certain line if they're going to get down on the green. Well, now what you guys have been waiting for, this is some lead card action live Friday afternoon from Parma. Well, this is what we've been waiting for, Liz. This is the lead card of the men's advanced division. You bet, Billy. And it's a beautiful day. The rain seems like it's let up, but however, we've got a lot of wind to deal with out here. Oh, no doubt. These guys are going to have to deal with the wind all day long. This is a magnificent hole to start with. 269 feet, a little pond that they've got to clear. Yeah, you know, Billy, and we're thinking it's about 240 to clear the other edge of that water, and that's well within the wheelhouse of every one of these players here. This is the lead card of the A pool, Billy. These guys got distance. No doubt. They've got game. We're going to give you the light lay down right now. Dan Hastings sitting at 22 under. That's right. Kenny Glassman right behind him at 19 under. Pete Ulibarri sitting at 17 under par. And just a stroke behind him, young Dylan Horst. Well, we're going to have a great time here today. We're going to have at least three holes from this round at Palmer Park. This is the lead card action for the 2011 Am World Championships. Well, stepping up to the tee now, we've just, and, and you should know, these guys are working on a one hour delay. You know, that can really mess your head up, Liz. Oh yeah, you don't want to warm up too much, Billy. You don't want to tie yourself out because you have to perform during these rounds and you want to be fresh. Well, they were they were uh, prepared to tee at three. This is the only round they've played today. It's four o'clock now. And the new leader, local boy, Dan Hastings on the tee. That's right, it looks like he's going to attempt this forehand. Well, the wind is really surging. Feels comfortable. It's coming in good. It's got to get down. It's got to hit something. Oh, I think he went off on the path almost to the other tee pad. He is safe. He went long. He's going to have a challenging putt. Well, he absolutely took the pond out of play. And I don't know if you can hear it at home, but the wind is surging. Oh, you bet. And it's a headwind right now. That flag down here at the pin is just whipping. There's Kenny Glassman. That's got to rise. I'm liking it, Liz. I think it's got enough. Oh, yeah. It's going to get down. You know Ooh, that a little is a, skipper. That's a good looking shot. Before the round, Kenny was right in that exact spot putting, saying, this is where I'm going to end up. I like his game plan. All right, good for him. We got Pete Ulibarri on the pad now. He's two back of Kenny. Let's see if he can put a move on hole number one. Well, this would be the moving day round. We've got the semifinals this morning, then the final nine. These guys not only want to hold on to this lead card spot, but they want to cut into Dan Hastings lead. Oh, this is a beautiful shot. Liz. Oh, it looks like it's dropping. Oh, great shot. He is all of 15 feet away. Uh, that's how you want to start right there. Now, here's young Dylan Horse coming to the tee, and he's, he threw that sidearm quite a bit yesterday. He's got a lot of power. Yeah, we see him throw a backhand and sidearm. He's really a versatile player. He's young. He's got energy. So you can see those trees right off the tee pad whipping. I mean, the wind is in a circular motion Ooh. out here, and it is really going to affect flights today. Oh, that's oh, trouble. Yeah, he's not taking that into account. He's going to be safe, Billy, but he's going to have a tough, tough. Oh, what a great kick, Liz. He could have been 60, 70 feet in the woods. You bet, Billy. He is on the edge of the fringe. He's going to be able to easily save a three. Well, this is the lead card action from Palmer Park, Friday afternoon. All right, Billy, as we're making our way down to the green, following the lead card, Dylan Horst, he got really, really lucky. He threw a shot that got out of control. He was going deep into those woods, but he got knocked down right on the edge. Well, he's going to be able to get up and down for a three from here, but boy, it was going to be one tough three if he didn't hit that tree. Oh yeah, he is smart enough. We watched him play smart all day yesterday. He knew exactly what to do. But you can really see the wind whipping Liz, and he's, he's I mean, he found that pass, so he's penetrated down just a little bit. Oh yeah, look at that wind. He's got a tailwind putt that means he's going to have to putt a little bit harder than he's used to if he wants to get it all the way to the basket. He did, I think he ran that putt, but he kept it safe so it would fall by the basket. Smart move by Danny Hastings. Well, you know, behind him directly is Ryan, uh, is Glassman. Yeah, Kenny Glassman, he threw a great shot. If it got down a little bit sooner, right now he's looking at a circle's edge putt. But I know he's ready to make that putt, Billy. Well, he's going to pace it off now. 
This is an opportunity. He's only three back, and this is an opportunity to get one right quick. We know Ulibar's gonna get one as he's only about 15 feet away. We'll get in position now as Kenny's gonna get ready. Well, here's Kenny Glassman, and I'll tell you, this is at least a 20 mile, maybe 25 mile an hour wind whiz, and it's Liz, it is enough to get into your head. That's right. Now, this is our first attempt at birdie on this hole. So if he does get this birdie here, he'll be one stroke closer to getting that lead back. Now, Kenny out of Western Illinois, he's got a lot of support. Oh, what a great putt by Kenny Glassman. Well, he has been putting great all week long. If he can just get himself into position to get a few birdies today, we oh. could really have a fight tomorrow over at Chile and then over at the, at the uh, community college. Yeah, and what a sweet course that's looking to be. Uh, here's Pete Ulibarri, and he's going to do exactly what he wants to. He's going to get one stroke off right off the bat. Yep, again, we really like his routine, Billy. He's so calm and so focused, and this is what gets him ready to putt. Yeah, it's a consistent routine, and I expect this to be right in the heart. Again, this is not, a, this is not even a hard putt, I'd say. The wind is going to make him think about it twice, but he should make this. Good call, Liz. This is your lead card from the... Friday afternoon round at Parma. Parma, one of the best courses they've got in the area, and this is gonna have a lot to do with who's gonna be the world champion this year. Dan's got to be a little disappointed, but he's really been calm all week long. He's right where he wants to be. He's got a chance, that's all he really needed. Yeah, and you know, hopefully he doesn't think that this is, you know, any way indicative of how he's going to play and how, or how the other players are gonna play. It's gonna be a tough round right here with this wind and anything can happen. This is Parma Park, there's so much OB. Well, one hour delay, lots of time for these guys to think. And we're just gonna see how it takes effect. There's one hole down here at Parma Park. Let's move on around and see some more live action from the lead card Friday afternoon. Well, here we are at Parma Park. We're at hole number 40. Oh, what a sweet hole, 570 feet. You can see the large bush there in the middle of the fairway. They're gonna have to navigate that and then the basket actually turns up into the woods. That's right, Billy, and we've had a little bit of action going on here. Dylan Horst is gonna take the tee pad after his big deuce on the last hole, but I think an even bigger story is the three save that Dan Hastings had. He threw it deep into the woods and canned a great comeback putt at about 45 feet. Well, that allowed him to hold on to the lead for just a little while longer. Kenny's already cut two strokes out of that three-stroke lead. And Kenny Glassman, he's brought his A game today, Liz. Ooh, Dylan Horse can throw that disc a long way, Billy. Well, he has definitely got it down there. He's actually thrown it a little past the mouth. Yeah, just a little bit. He's going to force himself to work left to right a little bit more than he has to. Okay, Kenny Glassman here. He was unable to capitalize on his great shot last time. It was about a 35 foot putt, but we've seen him make those before. Oh, no doubt. And he's birdied two out of the first three holes, so he is ready to go this afternoon. Oh yeah, he's coming charging. He wants that lead back, Billy. Well, that's a good looking shot, Liz. I like it. It might even get over towards the mouth. And here it comes. That's a good hookup. Ooh, that's a little, maybe a little bit on the long side too, but still a great shot. He is a little deep. He's going to have one tough angle, and the adrenaline is flowing in this lead card. Here's Pete Ulibarri. Yeah, he's also gone two for three birdies here. He's cut into the lead. He's sitting right now at 19 down, and he's only three back. I tell you what, Dan Hastings just got to hold on to that lead. Maybe he's going to have to start playing a little bit aggressive. I sort of like this one here. It's going to run out of steam and get him right over to the mouth, and that's what you're looking yes, for, sir, Liz. Billy. You want to be right there so you're looking at the mouth. Make your, give your, at least give yourself a shot for a three. Well, let's see if Dan can get it going. I mean, we know he was a little nervous. He's got a lot of homies. We've got a lot of golf left, but he just needs to calm down and let his game come to him. You bet, Billy. And I mean, watching him make that putt for a three, it was, it was truly an amazing golf shot. All right, we got Dan Hastings up on the pad. One stroke lead right now. He's choosing to keep it a little bit low. Oh, that could be trouble, Liz, as he's coming in tight. That took a big flare. We're gonna have to go down. He could have another tough wood shot. Well, Dylan Horst, and he is, Liz, he is looking. He's got no angle to get to the basket. He's yeah. got, he can take the big sky hyzer and plinko it down, but it is a high risk shot. That's right, he's pointing right through there. It looks like he's going up and over. He's probably gonna throw that super duper spike hyzer. 
I don't know, this wind, once you get it up into the air, Billy, the wind can do anything. It, I hear the wind just rustling those leaves around. Oh, he is throwing an end flip. All right. Oh, oh and he, <laughs> look at that. He stabs it right into the ground. He has tombstoned it down, but he is still a good 60 feet short, and that's not the putt he's looking for, but a great effort right there from Dylan Horst. Well, it looks like Kenny Glassman's moving in now and just a little too much. Yeah, Oof. not quite as challenging maybe as a shot as Dylan's, but he's, I mean, let's see if he can get into the mouth of this hole. This is a great golf hole, Billy. This forces the players to hit an exact landing zone and just a little bit at what we're looking at. Once you get to the mouth, you've got a ton of trees in between there and the basket and the well, basket's up on a mound. And these are unusual. This is like one tree that branches out into six or seven or eight little trees and they are gnarly, Liz. But Kenny Glassman now trying to make a decision. You know, he knows that Dan's in a little trouble. We went by and looked at Dan's life. Liz, he doesn't have anything. Kenny would be smart to put himself into position right here, just to cart an easy four, and just see if Dan could get his game going. You know, that's right, Billy. Once you get in trouble on a hole like this, you have to get your way out. Well, Dan Hastings is Dan actually Hastings fixing is the throw going, now. That's right. He's over here in the woods. He's got a really tricky shot. He has a he large is. tree to his right. He's got to miss a big trunk and still past that, he has to weave it through up to the basket. Well, he's away and he's got it out. Oh, he's oh. hit a tree, but you know, he's got up. He's going to have a putt, Liz. That's about a 40 footer to an elevated basket. You know, and that wasn't a bad play, Billy. I know he thinks he probably couldn't get it all the way to the basket, but get himself somewhere where he can make a putt. Well, Kenny's disappeared around the corner, Liz, and Boy, this is just a super tough angle. Yeah, he's butted up against the far side of the opening here. A great shot, Liz. He's trying to get it up in there. Oh, he hit one of those crazy six-fingered trees you're talking about, and it ate it. Well, it just spit it out barely on the other side, and he's probably a good 40, 45 feet away. Okay, yeah. Pete Ulibar is stepping up to his shot now. Now, he has the easiest approach to get a three here. He's right in the middle of the opening. I mean, he's still gonna have to navigate these trees in here, but he's got the best chance at a three out of all these guys. Well, what you're looking at is a perfect drive, Liz, and now that's what it takes to get this opportunity to throw another great shot to get down here for a three. Oh yeah, I mean, he can see all of his opponents just, they all have challenging putts. If he just lays it up there, he can take a stroke on the field easy here. He could get within two of the lead right here. I like it, Liz. Oh yeah. That's what he's looking for. He got rooted just a little. He set up a tap and he's gonna have a little tester of about 18 feet. Let's get on down in the woods and show you this gnarly green. All right, we've got Dylan Horst. He's the furthest out. He had to, he threw a great shot to get inside of here. He hit the front of the tray wow. from about 70 feet on that elevated basket. We got a gallery forming with this group. These guys are in an element that some of them have never been in. And now it's not just about golf shots, Liz. We're gonna see how that noodle between the ears is. That's right. Dan Hastings now, he made a great shot to get to right here. You know, they all have all had to maybe throttle down and realize that they're playing for a four here. Well, they're checking now, just trying to determine who is out. You know, and there could be a special ruling here. I believe, you know, one of those finger trees you're talking about, Dan Hastings may have put his disc right inside of that No, tree. I believe that's Kenny Glassman over there. Dan is on the right correct, side. Correct, correct. And this could be a tough, you know, he's gonna have to actually, legally, he's gonna have to get behind that tree, put his foot behind that tree, and now he is, he's gonna be hugging that tree and throwing his shot. You bet, and you know, we've got the marshal out here with us right now. They are fully equipped to handle all these rules calls. You know, it's a good thing they're following this lead card around. Well, they've actually got the marshals on the first, second, and I believe the third cards out here. This is the A pool. These are the big boys. And there's Kenny Glassman. He's moving in. All right, he's still, he doesn't, he's not forced to do a forehand shot here. It looks like he's gonna try to attempt a straddle putt from out behind there. Well, he's just gonna do the smart thing, Liz. He's gonna pop that thing right up under the basket. He's gonna take his four and he's gonna move on. He's gonna see exactly what Dan does. He's already cut two strokes out of that three stroke lead and Dan's having problems. He's looking for his game right now. Well, all right, all week long, Dan Hastings has been playing on average 997 rated golf, Billy. That's pretty hot. Wow, he is a 981 rated player and he is playing, that's on average, that is hot for sure, Liz. No wonder he's in the lead. Yeah, you bet he's actually 979 rated, Billy. That's 18 points above his rating. Wow, let's see if he can bang this. This is for a birdie three. Oh, hits the front of the cage, but it's going to sit on top. Shoo, he's lucky that didn't roll away. Oh, that definitely came off with a roller angle, and he could have caused himself another stroke, but he's got a smile on his face. All these guys out here rooting for him. Got to feel good, Liz. You're right, and you know, he's the only one that, 
I, I, Pete is the only one that has a real chance at a three on this hole. And look at him, what's he doing there? What a routine the guy is consistent. I love it, Liz. Looks like he's Lulaberry. Oh, this is a huge putt. He could get within two strokes of the lead. This is only the fourth hole, and to cut two strokes or three strokes off already would be huge for Pete. This is every bit of 22, 23 feet to a raised basket. You know, it's windy out here. Oh. What a putt, and they like it. Pete's on the move right now. He and Kenny Glassman both. Dan better find his A game quick, Liz. Nice as the group's giving a little love there to Pete. Now here's Kenny Glassman. And this is one of those routine putts you make three, four hundred times a week. He's just gotta have this one. Well, like you said, you're on the lead card of Am Worlds. Any putt's tricky. Not a problem for Kenny. Now Dan's gonna move in. Dan stayed right up on top of the mound. That was truly fortunate. He's gonna card yet another par. Dan has no birdies thus far through the first four holes, looking to get it going. And he's a little nervous, but that's to be expected. He is in the lead of the AM World Championships. That's right, you never know what's running through your head at this point in time, Billy. Well, this is a lead card from Friday afternoon at Parma. We're gonna move on around the course now and give you just a little more action from the 2011 Amateur and Junior World Championships. Well, Liz, the action is really heating up, and Dan Hastings, he's holding on by a thread right now. I can't now. believe it. You know, he is, everybody else is really making this run and getting their twos. Dan Hastings sitting steady at getting pars on all these short holes, but I don't know. I, I Does he have what it takes to hold on to that lead? Maybe well, even get it back? We're going to see, because we're going to show you some more action from those guys. But first, we want to let you know about our Voodoo Disc Golf Bags giveaway. They have got the sweetest dyed technology going on right now, Liz. Yeah, I know. It's so intricate. But you guys can have a chance to win one of these awesome discs. All you got to do is go to Facebook, fan us on Facebook at Clash DVD, and you'll be entered in to win one of these three discs. This is a Voodoo in the Bag. <laughs> with Jack Daniels. Jack, I tell you, man, your bag looks good. It looks tight. It looks brand new. Uh, this is the Karma? Yeah. So what it tell, exactly what it is that you love so much about the Voodoo bag, I personally love the way you got everything all labeled up, stickered up. Little it's your tattoos. personal. Yeah. It's plenty of space to put any kind, of, any kind of anything on there if you want to tattoo it up like that stuff. Uh, pockets inside the pockets. Keeps everything separated. You fit three putters in here. Yeah, that's what I'm noticing. You got three putters comfortably up in the front. And that's some nice voodoo artwork right there. We're going to be giving away some of these voodoo discs. Be sure to fan us over at Clash. Now, I'll tell you now, if we come back in, you've got two minis, and you've got the separators in. What well, you got? Drivers, mid-range putters? How you got this thing set up? Yeah, mid-range. Uh, these are all turnovers. You know, go all right. These are all drivers. So you've got it set up for, and if you want to set your bag up, you can set putters, uh, rocks, mid-range, however you want to do it, but you've yeah. got yours by stability right through here. Right, exactly. All right, let's, uh, let's just get into the bag a little bit and let's just see what all you got up in here. Well, that's my hair dryer, just in case, you know, in case it gets wet in the field. In the field where you're going to plug that like booger in. Sweaty, you know? Nice and, and... You never know when you need an extra pair of underwear. <laughs> <laughs> never, never know. Well, Jack is prepared for whatever the elements are. Oh, look here. Oh, that's my Clash DVD. Nice. You nice. gotta love that. And oh, that, that's my, uh, that's my uh, picture. A little Billy Crump, old days. That is me right there having a ball at the yeah, USGGC. Oh, yeah. I am hollering. It doesn't look, it's <laughs> not what it looks it, like. It doesn't look good. <laughs> Oh, Jack. I hear you, that with me everywhere. Everywhere. That makes me feel awesome, Jack. Let's get the disc. Let's get the picture. Let's get the underwear back down in. There's a hotel somewhere. One hair dryer light, I'm afraid. No, Jack, I brought that. You brought that. This, this is just a travel bag <laughs> that he's constantly rolling with. I'll pack uh, it all in. Don't worry about it. We're going to get it back up in. That's what I want to show them, though, Jack, is just how easy it is with this voodoo bag. Yeah. I mean, I just slammed everything right back in the bag. Let's see what we got on uh -oh. this side. I'm a little afraid to open this <laughs> side, guys. <laughs> Guess I need to order room service. Room service is important if you need to make or the phone call. Or if you forget your cell phone. That is key. 
some snacks, a little granola action, nut clusters. Who doesn't love nut clusters? That is a good <laughs> thing for sure. Oh yeah, a little, this is a player pack item right here, a little glow mini. We were playing with those last night yeah, over at the player awesome. party. Beautiful doll. Oh, wait a minute now. I got a few more inside. Nice little water babies for the face if you got a little uh, sunburn. Sharpies, you got your, your little phone opportunities. Phones, uh, iPod. Well, you don't need a phone if you've got this phone carrying well, with see, you, I that's for my sure. Cell phone. That's why I got that phone. Makes complete sense, Jack. Makes complete sense. Now, what is the biggest thing that you say that you like about this bag? I mean, obviously, you can see I just packed it full. I just unpacked it. I mean, that was pretty easy right yeah, there. You can fit a lot more in there, too. A lot more. Now, uh, what exactly you got going on here? You use the, the quad shocks. Is that the best thing that you want to do? Yeah, until Voodoo's actually coming out with, um, it's called a straight jacket. It's going to be their, uh, their shoulder straps. Right. Super comfortable. It's just straight straps and they're really comfortable. Well, yeah, those will be coming up. That's Jack Daniels, in a year. voodoo in the bag, and he's telling you that there's straps on the way. Jack, a beautiful bag. Whoa, what do we got over here, Jack? Golf balls. Ah, uh, yeah. Finally got my balls back from my ex-wife, so I just keep them in my bag. Beautiful, beautiful. That way they're always with you at yeah, least. I don't want to lose them again. So you got four pencils. Anything else I'm missing in here? I mean, you got some towels, plenty of towels. Water bottles. Oh, look at this thing. So this is an insulated 20-ounce water bottle. BPA free. And this is sweet. I mean, does this keep your drinks uh, cold, keep yeah, them hot? Or, or hot. Yeah, cold or hot. Very nice. First and when is this supposed to hit the market? Uh, I think he's got some on on the website on the website yeah. well now if or you need a voodoo bag you can go over to facebook and go to the voodoo site and man i'll tell you these are some of the nicest bags out jack i really want to thank you for your time today and voodoo bag oh they got it going on now for one of our favorite segments here's the clash meet the players Hi, my name is Joseph Whitney. Uh, PDJ number is 34698. Local here at Rochester. Loving the world, first time ever. Uh, I'd like to say thanks to everyone that's uh, sponsored every hole here. Uh, that's about it. Yeah, Will Mells, 35820 from Albany. I want to say what up to all my Discat brothers from Albany. I want to say what up to Lou Garcia from Jersey and uh, Crazy Chris from Jersey from Illinois. Have fun, guys. Shoot well. Andy Steiner from Canton, Michigan, 39335. Have my first worlds. Have a great time. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, man. Hi, I'm Tim Stout from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. My PDG number is 38099. I want to give a shout out to the PFDS. My name is David Tucker. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. My PDG number is 34885. I want to give a shout out to New Hanover Disc Golf Club and Mike Bozick and all those guys down there for helping me in the Charlotte Disc Golf Club. Thanks a lot. Brad Napier, number 40434 from Baltimore, Maryland. I'd like to say what's up to Druid Hill. What's going on? <laughs> I'm Blake Baumgartner, number 22362. And I want to give a shout out to my father, Jan Baumgartner, 22361. And he keeps me playing every year. Eight years in a row, we're from Austin, Texas. Thanks. Hey, my name is Mike Thompson, PDGA 45066. Just wanted to give a shout out to my mom and dad, my girlfriend Christy, and my sister Colleen and my friend Ryan for winning the uh, doubles championship. Uh, we're out here for our first time at Worlds and it was a great time. What's up, I'm Bob Kimball, PDJ 39640. Uh, done a blast out here for the last five days. Courses are all looking awesome. Just want to give a shout out to my girlfriend for letting me play, Becca Blake. And uh, yeah, just out here watching the first card now, so we're gonna see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. My name is Mike Bevins. I'm 45610. Um, I'm a local, actually, so I play these courses all the time. And same thing, you know, the wife and kid. Thanks. Great time. Hi, my name's Danny Rosanna, PDJ number 45926 from northern New Jersey. Uh, my name's Jason Hannigan, PDJ number 33635, and I'm from Warwick, New York. Nick Simsack, 36995 from Vernon, New Jersey. Tom Bross, 41741, from Goshen, New York. And Derek Hall, PDJ number 42839, from Vernon, New Jersey. My name is Garrett Maddox, PDJ number 22290, and I'm from Dayton, Ohio. Wayman Pete, PDJ number 43475, from Baltimore, Maryland. 
I'm Nick Cohn, 49626. I'm from Rochester, New York. Nathan Brewer, 36833 from Raleigh, North Carolina. Will Stafford, 34075 from Raleigh, North Carolina. Steve O'Hollowell from Twin Falls, Idaho, PDGA number 38895. I'm the distance doctor also. Uh, you could go to throwdg.com. I'd like to send a shout out to uh, all my friends and family out in Idaho and Indiana. Go Idaho Disc Golf. What? Earl Frazier, 24095, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Mike Nufaglis, 48157, right here, Rochester, New York. Matt Hamilton, PDJ number 30556 from Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. Shout out to the Creekside Crawdads. Andrew Wright, PDJ number 35354, Seabrook, Texas. Colin Frazier, PDJ number 35016. I want to shout out to the home of the 08 Worlds, Kalamazoo, Michigan, Battle Creek, Kalamazoo, Kansas. Adam Metz, PDJ number 35224. I want to shout out to Seabrook, Texas, Miramar Park. Well, Again, my favorite thing to do on the planet is meet a new human, and we just met several of our new family members. That's the Clash Meet the Players. Now, let's get them back out, and let's, oh, let's go see some more live action, Liz. I know, Billy. I want to see if Dan Hastings can get the lead back. I know Kenny Glassman is doing some amazing things. Dylan Horst right now is playing out of his mind. Yes, that boy is. is a great player. And the fourth person on their card, Pete Ulibarri, he is no joke either, Billy. Oh, here's some more live action from Friday afternoon. We're at the 2011 AM World Championships, and this is the lead card from Parma. Well, what a magnificent hole this is, and what some incredible play is going on. This is hole number six at Parma Park, 333 feet. And hole number five that we just left, oh my goodness, Dan Hastings took a six. He is now sitting at 20 under par. Kenny Glass, huge putt to tie him with a share of the lead at 20 under par card and a five. Pete Ulibarri dunking a 10 footer to take a six. And now back to hole number six. Here's Dylan Horst. Oh, what a great shot, Liz. Billy, that was incredible. Did you know he took a three on that 533 foot hole just before this? Well, it took the first two guys in first and second place, three shots to get out of the woods on that hole. It's a demanding par four that could easily play as a par five. But back to this hole, right. 333, danger everywhere, Liz. That creek you see running down there, there is orange paint. They used a whole can of orange paint on this on this particular hole. It is really out of control. There's you Kenny bet. Glassman. He looks like he's playing safe. Oh, wow, did he get lucky. Well, he, he actually hit the tree, but he did get a little flare skip, but he continued forward instead of kicking right into the shul. You're right, Kenny Glassman knows he's tied back for that lead again, and he's gonna, I, I think he's going back to that safe strategy, maybe let the chips fall and get back into a rhythm. Dan Hastings on the pad now. Dan is struggling. Dan has yet to cart, cart a birdie. Yeah, he's yeah. got his mentor on the bag, Bobby Jones, one of his best friends. Oh, and he has just gacked that, Liz. He just, horrible balance on the tee pad. He has thrown that thing right into the thickest part of Shul, OB. And Dan is struggling hard. You're right, Dan. Not, I think he needs to just calm down, Billy. Otherwise, he's going to throw this away. He's worked too hard to get here. Well, he's got all the game he wants. He told me before the round, I'm really not where I want to be. I really would like to be three strokes behind so I can put it on. So he doesn't like that position of being up front. Maybe if he gets a stroke behind, his whole attitude will change. Here's well, we'll Pete wait and Ulibarri. see. Oh no! He, oh, I tell you what, these guys are having a hard time off the, right off the tee pad here. Well, Pete still got that ten foot doink in his head, and he's hit a tree, but he has stopped about three feet short of the OB. And there is danger, danger everywhere on this hole. Let's get up and see just how much trouble Dan Hastings has caused for himself. Well, Liz, they're trying to find a spot for him to drop, and I'll tell you what. That boy is happy that they use some orange paint because you do not want to go where his disc is to get it, much less to try and make a shot. Yeah, there's no footing over there. I mean, it's tall grass. It's really scruffy. It's going to be a tough shot. Oh, uh, he's uh, there's a little creek that runs right through there. He's in on one. He's out on two. And he's basically got the same shot he had from the tee pad. Yeah, there's just now tall grass underneath him. I mean, you have to challenge with his shot. He's going to have to challenge all of that airspace over that creek, too. And there's so many trees, Billy. Well, Dan's in a struggle right now, but he's got game. He has been playing over his rating all week long. All he needs to do is take a big, deep breath here, pull a shot off, and maybe he'll feel comfortable not being in the lead. All right, there it is. That looks like a much better shot. Oh, he catches just a little something, but that is a beautiful shot. Oh, and well done by Dan Hastings. He is starting to pull it back together, I think. Well, that's going to save him a bogey and only lose one stroke because Kenny Glassman's in trouble as well as Pete Ulibarri. Okay, Pete Ulibarri. 
Oh, no, he took a little bit of trouble off the pad, hitting a tree early, but got really lucky by not going OB, Billy. No, you are not kidding, Liz. That OB is just all the way down past the basket. And this is a dangerous shot, too. He's got to steer clear of all trees here. That's a golf shot. He's, he's playing smart now. All these boys are starting to realize that this course is a lot about OB. That is one methodical walk he has taken. He has walked down the left side of the fairway. He is pacing this thing off. He knows it's a dangerous little shot within 15 feet. If he's not careful, he could go OB. You know, Billy, him taking this extra bit of time is also giving all the other players coming off that pretty horrific hole uh, just before this one. And this little bit of extra time has given everybody some time to, time to breathe and really relax. Well, they, uh, they need to take a couple deep breaths. This is the most tense group out here on the course. This is your lead card. That second card's trying to make a move. They weren't that far back. And I'll tell you what the trouble these guys have been having. They're going to open up some doors. Now, Kenny Glassman, now he is ready. And this is a touchy little shot. He's got two or three trees there on the hazel line. Oh, you bet. Not only that, but there's OB behind the basket, so he's not even able to run the shot. Smart play. He just takes those trees out of play, leaves himself about a 10-footer, and he's going to card himself an easy three. Well, I'll tell you, Pete Ulibarri, he missed a putt about that distance on the last hole, and he's got to be the purest putter I've seen out here, and that was just a bad mistake for him on that one particular shot. All right, Dylan Horst. What a drive from the kid. He is bringing it on here. He's and playing then... like he's not afraid of anything, Billy. Yeah. He's Great making two. his Great move. Two. And he seems to have his own little group out here following him. He's now got within one stroke of the lead. Wow, and these guys are really tight too. You know, Dan Hastings is gonna drop two strokes to Dylan into this hole. Well, here's Kenny Glassman. This is a huge putt. It's not a big putt. He just needs to card this for his three. And he's been playing this kind of steady golf all weekend long. All right, three for Kenny Glassman as Pete moves in right behind him. Let's see, he's got, I'm pretty sure Pete's gonna take his time and go through his whole routine on this shot. Yeah. He doinked one bout like this on the last hole. I can tell you that won't happen on this one. He's an old bar. Them boys just know how to put the biscuit in the basket. And what a great upshot after Dan Hastings. I don't even think he went in after that disc, Liz. I think he just told Bobby Jones, leave it, let's move on. And maybe that's what he needs. He's got to change his attitude, and he's got to get a birdie soon. Well, this is the action everybody's been wanting to see. And I'll tell you, this is the lead card from the advance division here in uh, the 2011 AM World. I tell we you what, Billy, this is really close. All these guys are, you know, within two strokes. We've got Kenny Glassman back in the lead by one stroke over Dan Hastings. Pete Ulibarri and Dylan Horst are tied. Dylan is playing an A game today. He's playing smart. He's making his putts. He well, wants to get up on top. Oh, well, this is one beautiful hole. I call this a North Carolina hole. Here's Kenny Glassman. Just want to take a mid-range, penetrate just over the wall, and have her sit down quick, Liz. Oh, you bet. You know these guys. It's got a lot of speed on it, Liz. Well, it's definitely safe. There's no OB behind the basket, but. Whew. Boy, he is going to be forced to take a big hyzer angle putt or take the skinniest line you've ever seen between two trees. That is just not where Kenny wanted to get. All right, Pete Ulibar, he had a great putt on the last hole. There's about a 30-footer just outside the circle after brimming off the top of the basket. Pete Ulibarri. He's only two back at a lead right now, and he's right where he wants to be. He just needs to relax. He's already had one mistake this round, that little doink putt. I don't look for him to have any more. You know, not only that, Billy, but there's some heat happening on the second card. We've got Cameron Colglazer at 17 down at this point. That's the shot, Liz. Oh, yeah. That's what you're looking for. Just clears it over. He went right of the wall. And on the second car, what's going on? Cameron's making the move. Yeah, you know, he's at 17 down right now through the last hole. And I believe he's got what it takes to make some moves out here at Parma, too. Well, here is the hottest young man on the course. I mean, he has got this sidearm dialed in today. You bet, Billy. This is a 242-foot hole. It's downhill. Let's see if he can stick one right underneath the pin. Oh, that's trouble. Oh, big trouble. It's coming right oh over our goodness. heads. He's going right to the OB. Oh, oh, oh it trickled oh, right man. down in there. Now he's going to have to take that from this side and have a real tricky putt. That's a long putt with a bunch of obstacles in between. Well, he's got a chance. And now, you know, that's not what you want to see right before you step up on the tee. But Dan, he's got his side on him. He's played this whole bunch. He says this is his favorite course. And that's probably one of the reasons he's not playing good. He puts a lot of pressure oh, on Oh, that's himself. coming in hot. 
Oh, wow, he almost gave us an ace, Billy. He went far beyond the basket, but boy, did he give it a run. Boy, the gallery was excited about that one, as we were. We're gonna let him come on down. This is the lead car, the advanced division. This is your AM World Championship. Oh, one of these guys is liable to walk home with the title, but that second card, oh, they're coming fast. Oh, this is Dylan Horst. He went OB. Now he's lining him up, set himself up for a tricky putt. He's gotta go be between a bush and a not solid tree. Well, I like these kind of putts because it forces you, it shows you the line. If he can just hit that line, there's a good chance he can make this putt. Oh, he hit the front of the cage, Billy. Really. It was a good attempt. He's happy with this attempt. Well, Dan Hastings, I like what I saw, Liz. He came right in, he took charge. He told him who was out, he assessed the situation. He's trying to take control of this group again. Yeah, and I think he's starting to feel a little bit more comfortable too, Billy. I know early he was a little bit worried about this round, you know, possible rain, possible wind, but I think as he gets more into the round, he's also going to feel a little bit more comfortable. Well, he's got his mentor and a great golfer in his own mind, Bobby Jones, on the back, keeping him calm. And look, with all the trouble Dan's had, he is still right in the mix. He's one stroke out of the lead. All he's got to do is draw it back in now and get his game going. That's right, Billy. Okay, we got Kenny Glassman, our current leader right now, by one stroke. Kenny Glassman has shot 3,000 rated rounds this week so far, Billy. Wow, that is huge. I mean, he is, he's been playing about 25 or better points above his rating all week, and that is just huge. That's how you win a world championship. Oh, you bet, Billy. 964 rated. Hmm. Now, that was a great bid, Liz. That was well outside the circle, and that was just about an inch and a half low, but dead on line again for Kenny. Yeah, and it wasn't mandatory that he even made that putt, but. All right, we're looking at now. He's he's asking for a ruling, Liz. He wants to hop putt. He wants to know well, if he's you know, inside or outside that circle. And They have done a good job at painting the circles around these baskets, but as these players trod through here, you know, and Mother Nature takes over, sometimes they do fade over time. Well, we probably had an inch to an inch and a quarter of rain over the last 36 hours, and that will definitely demolish some paint but you can see the paint along the front it's still holding on you bet we've got Marshall Bill Newman coming over now to make an official ruling on in or outside of the circle well that's what you want you need that Marshall in there and, and it will eliminate all the stress and the problems in, in, within the group you know the karma in this group is really good for a lead card usually there's a lot of tension some stress going on these guys genuinely like each other and they're almost pulling for each other yeah they are they get excited for a good shot and you know they almost lend out a hand and try to bring each other back up when bad things happen well now they've made the decision i believe they've called him inside the circle and he's not going to be able to hop but i you know oh. i don't know that he wants to hop from there liz i don't know billy when you have to force it through a tunnel shot like that sometimes the hot putt gets you the speed that you need he doesn't i, I don't think he's going to roll ob behind it if he if he gives it a nice good hard putt there is that wall that guards it if he misses the putt he'd probably roll right into that brick wall he is a laser putter let's see if he can get this this is for birdie here on hole nine. Oh, he did jump putt. he is outside the circle just a little short, trying oh. to get back. All of an inch short, Billy. That was a good putt. And there he is, Mr. Consistency. He's got himself about an 18-footer, maybe a little inside, but he looked at it. He says, let me go through that routine one more time. Oh, you bet, Billy. Now, this is for a two. This is going to shoot him right back up in the mix. Well, he's only two back right now. This will get him within one of the lead if he can drop this in. I'm going to call this good right here, right now, Liz. Let's see if he can handle the pressure, Billy. Oh, when he does, great putt. That's a ulibar. Them boys don't miss putts. Let's just hope that little doinker doesn't come back to haunt him in the end. You know, that's gonna make his dinner taste like a hot dog no matter what he buys tonight. <laughs> Dan Hastings finishing up for his three. Looks a little bit upset about his play today, Billy. Well, he's through the front nine now, and he's really carded no birdies, maybe one birdie. He's having a tough round, but that's okay. There's nine holes to go. The wind's letting down. It's going to be pristine, and we're going to leave this lead car of the advance group now. It's been the lead car for the 2011 AM World Championships here on Friday afternoon from Palmer Park. Oh, man, I don't know who's going to be our next world champ because these guys are on a roller coaster, Liz. You bet, Billy. Everybody's playing. They're putting it all out there today. They're making drives. They're making putts. Well, all within one stroke when we left them. Pete Ulibar making a move. That Dylan Horst, he is no joke. And we've had a big day. We certainly hope you've enjoyed this. If you are enjoying the coverage, be sure to support our sponsors, the PDGA. Gotta go, gotta throw. Voodoo Disc Golf Bags. Sun King Disc Sports. And Cloud9 Pro Shop in Hendersonville, Tennessee. 
Well, all right, let's throw it to the On Cloud9 interview with members of our lead card and your host, Billy Crump. Well, this is the On Cloud9 moment, and I'm here with second place and third place right now, respectively, 19 under and 17 under. Kenny Glassman, I'll start with you, man. Uh, had the lead been playing great all week long, and I was looking at your Facebook page, man. You got a lot of support. What does all that support feel like from all your homies? Yeah, it feels great. My friends, family, everyone from back home supporting me, rooting me on. Um, feel, feels good. So I'm pretty happy about that. Well, you're, I guess you're right where you want to be. You're in this lead card. Uh, we've got this afternoon at Parma and then tomorrow, tomorrow morning at Chai Lai. And uh, then you're going to have that final round. I mean, are you going to try to press? Are you going to continue with the same strategy? Yeah, I've been put, uh, playing pretty passive, but I think today I'm going to pick it up, run some more pots, play a little more aggressive, and really run for some birdies. Well, so. you've, you've gotten quite a few thus far, and uh, we'll move to the other side. Pete Ulibar, boy, you're trying to do something that, to my knowledge, has never been done. Uh, your younger brother, uh, and usually it'd be the older brother that gets the world championship first and bringing the younger brother in, but he actually brought you into the sport. You're a big BMXer, if, I, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. Yeah. And you just found your way to our sport and love it. You're yeah. in the lead card here at the Worlds, dude, and you're trying to become the second Eulabar to become a world champion in this division. Does that give you goosebumps? I got little tingles. Billy, you and you, watch out for the guy who starts to dream, I guess. You know, I, uh, it's a dream, you know. I never thought about it until about a, oh, six, eight months ago and got through the Memorial Championship down there in Scottsdale and then, uh, Man, just like it just it, it's it's all come together to be able to make it here and it's just a dream to just even be on the lead card. Kenny's a class act. These other boys I'm playing with, they're great, and you know we got a tough course out there to play. No doubt. And uh it's man, I it'd be a dream. That's all that's about it. Well have you been uh, have you been talking to little bro, getting some get little some brother advice? Little gives me a and... call now and then, now he's got back from Europe. Um you know, he's got some good advice and uh it's good, you know, it's good to have your little brother call you, man. We're pretty close, man. I love my little brother like nothing else. And nice. uh, so it's really cool, you know, to have have something in common. Again, you know, it's, it's pretty sweet. Well, we know who Paul will be pulling for. This is Pete Ulibarri. This is Kenny Glassman. This is half of the lead card. This is the on cloud nine moment at the 2011 AM World Championships. Well, I'm here with the current leader of the AM World Championship, Dan Hastings. Dan? Congratulations, man. I know what a feat you've been putting on. You got a big gallery walking around with you. Local favorite, lots of pressure put on you. You've really had your head on all week long and played solid golf. How's it going out there? It's going great. I've had the strategy of just not looking at the scorecard and just playing my game. And luckily I've had a caddy all week, so they take care of my scoring and just let me allow, just focus right on the game. Don't worry about my bag or anything. You know, I just gotta think. Liam Moore and uh, Ron Champ for doing that for me all week. So it was great having them, and they just helped me like bad shots. It's real helpful to have someone there saying, you know, oh, you know, it's okay, get back. So I just gotta thank them for you know helping. Positive me energy yeah, is, is just, a big, huge part. Yeah. Now we're you know you're a local, but these courses are far apart. We're at Palmer Park today. Do you play here very often? Um, when I have time, this is the course I like to play the most. Like it's. So this would be your personal favorite yeah, course. Yeah, definitely then. my personal favorite. Like, Ellison and Chile, one's next to my house, one's next to my school, but this is the one where if I have enough time to get out here after work and play a practice round, it's gonna be here. Challenges all aspects of your game, and it's just great all around course. Well, right. we're gonna show you action from Dan's favorite course. Good luck this afternoon, Dan. Thanks. Oh, what a day, Liz. I mean, Friday afternoon, all these guys wanting to make the semis. The guys we followed, they want to make the final nine. Oh, you bet. That top card is heated. People are going back and forth. They're sharing the lead. They're giving it up. Everybody's making jumps at him. The second card is trying to attack him. I tell you what, it's going to be an exciting semifinals round tomorrow. Well, we want to let you know that you can check all the scores at the PDGA tab, events, and tour page up top. But we can let you know that Rick Reichert Boy, he's laying the smack down on the Masters field. That's right, he's playing out of his mind. We got a little bit to, we watched him a little bit yesterday. He seemed smooth, in control, getting the birdies. What about the women's division? Ooh. Her seventh tournament ever, Liz. Yeah, I know, she hasn't been playing much. She's coming back with a vengeance, Billy. She's playing 920 rated golf this weekend. She's like 18 strokes ahead of her competition. That's Melinda Apton we're talking about, and she is in the lead by 18 going into this afternoon. She could increase that lead, but the focus for us has been on the lead card of the advanced division, and that's where we're gonna stay the rest of the weekend. We'll be back tomorrow, and we'll show you what happens at the 2011 AM World Championships here in Rochester, New York.